It's really an honor for me to, uh, to be here today. And I hope that this webinar will be useful for you. And you'll find uh, some new information and um, new experience from me. So please uh, write down uh, comments below. Uh, and um, for example, some questions in YouTube or Zoom. Um, as you like. And I think that there are many students today from different countries. So it will be great if you will write down uh, where are you from. Uh, I will start from myself. I'm from Ukraine and um, I was born in a city, Daniel. Let me see. From Benin, from Pakistan, Tunisia, Germany, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, United States, Cameroon, Tashkent, Ghana, and Nigeria. It's really amazing. So Welcome again, and uh, maybe I will start. Let me make the demonstration of my screen so you could uh, see the presentation. As you can see on the slide, um, there, are, there is Moscow and High School of Economics and uh, University of Luxembourg, uh, because um, these are the main universities in my life, I would say. Um, so uh, the structure of the presentation. I will firstly uh, first talk about my background, uh, how I entered HEC, University of Cologne, uh, University of Luxembourg. Uh, also, I will um, talk about the master program in economics at HEC and um, describe briefly about economics research program, about um, uh, applied economics, and also I will talk uh, about the courses which are presented, opportunities, so um, everything. Uh, which you are interested in. So please um, ask questions in the comments and I will answer them later. And also I received many, many questions uh, about the programs, about opportunities, uh, about many, many things. So I will just put them in, into the presentation and during my speech, you will hear the answers for your questions. Uh, and also, I will briefly talk about my studies at the University of Luxembourg because uh, now I'm uh, broadcasting from Luxembourg and, of course, about opportunities below, uh, beyond studies, about scholarship, about opportunities to work, uh, to do part-time job and many, many more things. Okay, so let me tell uh, you about my uh, path in life, uh, about my education. Firstly, I was studying in a really so usual school near my house. It was 15 meters from my house and um, it was really nothing special there. I just liked uh, studying. Um, I was um, receiving good grades, but um, nothing more actually. Uh, I didn't participate in mini Olympiads. Um, I would just um, um, studying and doing my hobbies and um, that is it actually but uh, what I was really fond of was mathematics uh, and uh, understood that it is the subject which is uh, really uh, makes me excited uh, and surprisingly I um, just heard about the uh, Great Lyceum uh, in my uh, city, Donetsk. Um, and I, understood, I was thinking that uh, okay maybe it's not for me, uh, maybe uh, there are so many uh, talented and motivated students there, but um, I'm not really uh, the best candidate, uh, but I uh, was preparing for exams for one year and I said the universe, um, this Lyceum. And actually, uh, the thing is that um, during my studies at school, there were uh, some motivated students for sure, uh, some motivated pupils, but not all of them were like this. And um, I was feeling myself a little bit um, awkward and um, like the main thing is that um, at school I was receiving good grades and I was thinking that okay uh, I'm the queen <laughs> uh, I can study everywhere uh, but actually when I entered uh, Lyceum it was completely not like this because I entered mathematical profile uh, where uh, the majority of students were um, boys and uh, almost all of them were participating in Olympiads for many years and um, when I entered I understood that I'm um, completely not the best student at all, because all of them were, all of the, the 
region, um, Donetsk region, um, and I was simply not, not the best at all. But I understood uh, that, okay, I don't have uh, too many talents, but I can just study a lot. So it is uh, my path always um, during the life that, um, so I find my comfort zone, then I try uh, to do something uh, better, uh, then understand that I am completely not uh, the best one, and I just study hard and, um, just do everything that is uh, possible um, to do some success and to study more and uh, to gain more knowledge. So um, I entered uh, this lyceum and as I said that there were many, many talented students and uh, I understood that it's not the best time to start doing Olympiads, but I started to do research and um, actually in the end I received, let me See, so it's my lesson, uh, the 1st of September, the uh, beginning of the studies. And uh, so in the end, I received the first uh, place in Ukraine in um, research. It was a program which is protecting data with um, elliptic cryptography. Um, so uh, as you uh, will see later that everything is possible. I just want to motivate you a little bit. Uh, so my path is actually from Donetsk to Moscow, then uh, I came to Cologne, returned, and um, then I came to Luxembourg. So how I did it? Uh, actually, um, I was thinking about getting education in Kiev uh, from 10th grade of my school, and uh, I was really planning to do it, to pass exams, uh, to do research, to have uh, uh, better opportunities to go to the best universities. Uh, but um, the thing is that during my um, like graduation year, um, there was war in my region. And I understood that I will have no uh, many opportunities to go to university because our exams were postponed. Uh, and I understand that I, I need to uh, find some more opportunities and actually, um, uh, you will maybe think that I was always um, uh, wanting to go to HEC. I was planning to do it many years, completely not, because it was um, just a big, big, big surprise. But the spoiler that I didn't regret, regret about my decision any moment in my life that I entered HEC. Because um, I just um, put, um, sent my portfolio, I had an interview, uh, and I was... Um, um, admitted to HEC. And it's a very interesting story that actually uh, before I was uh, planning to go to the um, um, to business informatics major, uh, not economics, but just surprisingly I understood, okay, uh, let me uh, put first uh, economics, um, um, let it be, because I've never been thinking too much about economics and uh, I was not doing Olympiads in economics, no microeconomics, macroeconomics, um, just uh, blindly going to HEC. But um, thanks God that uh, I just, um, it was um, a successful decision. Um, so uh, I entered uh, also uh, Kiev universities after exams were held, but I decided to take risks because um, if I would go to Kyiv, uh, I would always, um, I will be able to uh, return anytime uh, and uh, my parents will have made, uh, better opportunities for me to um, support me and um, there were relatives in Kyiv, but I decided to take a risk and uh, go to Moscow um, and uh, it was really very complicated part of my life because um, as you remember, I said that during the uh, studies in my lyceum, um, firstly, I was completely below average, but because of studying, uh, I became one of the best in the class. And I thought that I will go to HEC and show my talents and everyone will be surprised how um, uh, motivated and smart I am. So guess what? It was completely not like this. So. Um, I have a, a cool graph, I think, that my self-esteem during uh, periods of my life was usually like this, that from the school, my self-esteem was growing, then I came to Lyceum, then I came to HEC and to Luxembourg. So it was always like this, but I think uh, these are the things that make us really happy and um, 
give us uh, more opportunities. So if you are the best uh, person in your class and uh, all other people are really um, too much below you, I think it's the wrong class. So I think you should always search opportunities to study from your classmates and HEC really provide this opportunity. So um, it is the beginning of my studies at the HEC. Uh, as um, I said in the beginning, I'm from Ukraine. So I was uh, admitted as an international student uh, by the quote from the government of Russia. And um, actually there, are, there were really many uh, opportunities for me. So uh, I was also thinking about rankings of HEC. So as you see, it's um, the best university in Russia uh, in terms of economics and econometrics. And it is uh, the great sign because Faculty of Economic Sciences is actually uh, one of the like, leading faculties uh, at the HEC because um, it is actually one of the first ones were, which were created. And HEC is growing and the quality of education is actually perfect, um, I think, in every faculty. Uh, but I'm fond of mine uh, as Faculty of Economic Sciences. And uh, when I was considering HEC, I was, uh, of course, thinking about also ranking uh, because it's the sign uh, whether um, the students are really motivated and uh, whether it will be interesting to start there. Okay, so what maybe I will do like this. I hope that you still hear me. So um, Faculty of Economic Sciences provides um, master program, uh, master programs, undergraduate pro uh, programs, uh, different minors. For example, I was doing uh, the minor in uh, data science. It's an intellectual uh, data analysis. You can um, listen to courses from uh, the best professors uh, for free um, in Coursera. You can uh, go to the PhD, to the Doctoral School of Economics and some non-degree programs. And uh, there are many opportunities to work, for, for example, as teaching assistants uh, in uh, some laboratories. So it's a great opportunity. Um, also, um, let me come here. Uh, so uh, one of the bad things on the faculty now is the campus. Actually, before I was um, studying in different campus, it's only from 2019, uh, uh, um, the new campus on Pokrovka Boulevard uh, was opened. Uh, but uh, I already could experience uh, this campus and I was already staying in the library uh, for 24 uh, seven preparing for exams. And there is really so, such a student and great atmosphere there. And um, you can feel that you are surrounded by the best students and it's so interesting to communicate with them. Um, and uh, it's uh, just amazing. And these uh, coffee shops, co-working areas, and you really want to stay at HEC like 24 hours uh, a, a day, I would say, and um, to study more, um, to attend some events, and um, it's really great. And there are, of course, uh, some sport activities. There is really a great atmosphere and uh, the campus atmosphere, and you can attend so many great events, researched one uh, for career uh, opportunities and many, many more about the student organizations. And as uh, I mentioned about the international students, there is amazing atmosphere here because um, you, have, uh, you, you will have your own body if you will apply for this program. It is uh, really great support uh, from uh, people who are working in admissions office and in international office, there, are, there is a great community of international students. And of course, there are many more opportunities. Um, if you will, I don't know, find it a little bit difficult in the beginning, you can uh, go to psychological counseling. Um, there are so many events from different um, and people in, from different countries. Uh, so you can find friends from your uh, own country. Uh, so it will be more comfortable for you. And there are, of course, many, many student organization and this uh, great community of HSC students because all the time I, I'm t uh, like talking about HSC, uh, really my heart is uh, beating uh, really much. And it's true because um, for me, HSC is, uh, 
one of the best universities um, because in Russia there are of course great uh, uh, also some other great universities for example as uh, New Economic School, um, Moscow State University, uh, some technical universities but just uh, uh, I understand that if I could change my decision to enter some other universities I will never do this. And of course, uh, there is a great HEC day, usually at the beginning of September. I'm not sure how it is going to be this, uh, this year, but I'm sure that um, something interesting will happen. So there is a Gorky Park, uh, which is um, rented for the HEC community is really amazing. It's very beautiful in Moscow. And there are many student organizations making some events, um, sports events and educational ones, lectoriums, and um, it's just uh, amazing atmosphere. And uh, this is um, the photo from my graduation. So let me a little bit uh, talk about uh, my um, experience uh, during uh, the studies. So, um, I was um, studying at the uh, program um, called economics and also I was doing a research track uh, in economics. So let me begin. So um, I was not very good prepared in economics at first. Okay, I had not a bad background in mathematics, but actually uh, it, was, um, uh, it was all because I was surrounded by people who were uh, attending Olympiads, uh, participating in some research event in economics during school life, and uh, I was feeling a bit outdated. Uh, and especially when uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics started, it was um, quite complicated for me at the beginning. Um, but uh, for example, mathematics, I passed um, uh, good and um, I was admitted for the research track. Um, the number like 60 uh, or 50, 60 motivated students who wanted to learn micro, macroeconomics, econometrics, probability theory uh, on a deeper level. And uh, the quality of professors and the quality of students admitted is um, really amazing. And um, like I gained so great foundations. Uh, which I will mention a little bit um, later, because uh, nothing can make you compare yourself uh, as uh, going to another university and see the background of other students. And uh, you really understand that HEC provides the education on high standards, at very high standards. And at any university of the world, you will feel, uh, feel very comfortable after HEC. I really promise you, if you study hard and want to get knowledge, it's 100%. Because all the um, professors, all uh, the teaching staff um, are so, usually, of course, not everyone is perfect, uh, but they're usually um, very devoted to students and they want to share as much knowledge as they can. Uh, also, um, what is very important, um, usually economics faculty is considered as for wealthy students, for people from wealthy um, you know, families. And I was a little bit afraid at the beginning to come to HEC because I was thinking that um, everyone um, can judge somehow uh, because my family is just normal, not wealthy, and um, they gave me really much support, but um, not so somewhere that I could go buy my car and um, buy very um, expensive things. But what was a great surprise for me that no one cared. Like the only thing everyone cares it, um, what, um, like, how you can communicate, what is, uh, how is, uh, like, uh, how smart are you, and how you can use your brain, right, and uh, how um, can successful you be, how devoted to studies, and um, that is, uh, it's what everyone cares of, and I think that it is amazing, because I know that not in every university it is like this. Um, what else? And let me start from the graduate programs. Uh, so in English, there are some programs as, for example, economics research program, applied economics, uh, strategic corporate finance, and um, there is a master program, financial economics in ISF, but it's a little bit um, different department at the faculty. And there are plenty of uh, master program in economics in Russian, 
but you can take courses in English and Russian as you wish. So, um, okay, I um, finished my bachelor studies at HEC. Uh, why did I choose to go to master's degree? Uh, because um, I chose the economics research program because I understood that what I want is doing research and uh, I want to be surrounded by people who want to go usually to academia or they want to go to research departments in banks, in some uh, research centers. So uh, I wanted to be surrounded by people like this. So motivated students uh, was the, one of the best points because um, you really need to study from your classmates and um, it's the great opportunity. Of course, there are great professors with PhD degree and uh, you understand how, like even though I had uh, very good fundamentals at HEC, still, uh, I understood that how big the world of, for example, micro macroeconomic is, and it's so interesting to go deeply into it, and um, it's just amazing feeling. Um, so I gained so much new knowledge, and I understood how interesting could be macroeconomics one more time. Um, also, I had an opportunity to work in the laboratory, it is an international laboratory for macroeconomic analysis, where I'm um, since uh, 2018, and to be a teaching assistant, because during my first year of master program, uh, I was teaching macroeconomics for students, for bachelor students, um, at the third and second year, and it was just amazing experience, because I love teaching. I teach, uh, for example, mathematics from the first year at the university to pupils at school, uh, to many, um, many students, like from um, different universities or something like this. And um, uh, I also wanted to get a double degree. So if I'm staying in Russia and I have so many opportunities, why not to go uh, to um, study abroad for one year and receive the full diploma. It's not like exchange program when you have uh, a transcript, uh, receive a transcript after the studies in the full diploma. And of course, this campus atmosphere, uh, when you really want to um, stay uh, all day to study and um, to go to many, many events. And uh, my um, calendar was like filled uh, with so many opportunities. It's just amazing. And um, I want to talk a bit more about this exchange and dual degree master programs. So um, uh, the first year you are studying in Russia and second in Europe. Also, you can go abroad during the, your second, second year for exchange program, not for the whole year, as you wish. And actually, it was uh, not my first year of experience. I also was um, doing exchange semester at the University of Cologne because there are so many partners, uh, partner universities at the university, uh, at the faculty, and you can go to amazing universities to just have a cultural exchange, to gain some new knowledge, to um, study the classes that you cannot, for example, take at HEC and travel a lot uh, across Europe. And it was one of the best semesters during my studies because I was traveling a lot. Of course, I was studying also a lot. So it was amazing. Um, so I really recommend to go uh, abroad if you can, uh, if you uh, really want to uh, gain this experience. And I will talk about some opportunities uh, also later. And uh, what about the double degree programs at the faculty? Um, so as I mentioned, I'm studying now at the University of Luxembourg. Uh, there is also opportunity to go to Sorbonne University and to Paris uh, School of Economics. There is uh, one research program there. Uh, you can go to Erasmus University, Rotterdam, to Lancaster University, but um, as I think it was, it was for corp uh, strategic corporate finance uh, or, for, or for more financial, um, uh, degrees students uh, to Humboldt University of Berlin. So there are plenty of opportunities all, and all this university are really great. And let me um, start from the courses which are provided by uh, HEC in different programs. So I put some links and I will put uh, the link to Dropbox after the presentation. So you could um, take this link and just um, go to them and take a look um, at the website. Um, because I received really many questions about the courses at HEC and I want to talk about them a little bit more. So the first semester at the research program is mostly math for economics, 
probability theory and statistics, uh, microeconomics, microeconomics, and research seminar. So uh, when I applied in 2018, uh, we had a little bit different program because uh, there was like mixed program in Russian and English. Now it's held uh, only in English and all uh, teachers, all professors are, um, had the PhD degree from European universities, from USA, from all over the world. So the quality, as you understand, is really amazing. Uh, what else? Um, also, there is an opportunity to gain a scholarship uh, after the results of uh, the test. I think you can address this question, uh, for example, to academic supervisor, um, Olga Vladimirov uh, Lazareva. So you can maybe uh, ask her uh, about some things. I, I think that it will be some information uh, regarding scholarship a little bit later. And second semester is also uh, micro and macroeconomics. So actually, uh, if you think that they're, whole, um, they're held during the whole year, uh, no, it's not because um, macroeconomics and microeconomics now starts from the uh, like second module. So in HSC, there are four modules. Um, first is from September to October, second is from November to December, and the uh, second semester uh, there are third and fourth module from uh, January to March and from April to June. Uh, so um, macroeconomics and microeconomics are held from the second to the fourth um, um, fourth module, and uh, they are starting to be at advanced level from the beginning. But I would say that the quality is really amazing because. Um, I understood how deeply I can study, uh, for example, microeconomics, as I mentioned before, and all uh, the quality of all subjects, um, really great, yes. And from the second year, I'm not very familiar with all these courses because um, from the second year, I was doing my uh, double degree. But what I want to mention uh, is that um, during the first um, week of September, I was still in Moscow. So I attended uh, Macroeconomic Policy by Olga Kuznetsova. So, and I enjoyed this course a lot. And I attended several classes when I had an opportunity. Then I went to Luxembourg. So um, my recommendation is this course. Uh, and also there are many, many courses. Um, um, electives, and you can also choose uh, the course from the different master program from the, uh, for example, from applied economics. And also I received the question, um, how practical are lessons in economics at HSC? And do students have an opportunity to perform more practical exercises with data management and analysis tools such as data? So I mentioned a little bit here that uh, econ econometrics is usually performed in state or R. Also, you can see here that there is econometrics of program evaluation and data analysis in Python, we can, uh, which you can choose. Uh, so you will have an opportunity to practice your skills. And uh, about um, how practical are lessons. Of course, some lessons are theoretical, which are held uh, by professors from the industry. But what is great is that uh, HSC provides many opportunities um, to hear some experience from people from the industry. They're given seminars, talks, there are some lectures, and there are like uh, departments with big four companies, with well, all big four companies, which are given some lectures and seminars. Uh, so you will definitely have an opportunity to um, to go uh, for practical experience. Uh, after this research program, I would say that the best, uh, the best option for people who want to work in academia, who want to teach, who want to become a professor, and also want to work at the research department, maybe to be a quant in some investment bank, because um, the background in, for example, um, I would say background in uh, ec econometrics and probability theory um, is very good. So you can definitely go to some research department. Uh, if you want to, more, to have more practical experience, I would recommend more applied economics because there are still fundamental courses which are very important, I think, because um, through these fundamental courses, you understand more how to uh, like uh, to read news, how to uh, assess the information you receive. So I think that um, all these fundamentals courses um, 
are really significant in your career because um, for the fundamentals, you can put more and more and more knowledge, but without these fundamentals, I think it's very uh, complicated. Uh, the best uh, like opportunity is to put all the knowledge on the fundamentals uh, and to do uh, like a structure. So you study, for example, math, then my micro, macroeconomics, and then put some more specific subjects on them. So I think it's the best strategy which HEC successfully performs. So during the applied economics uh, for the first semester, you will have these fundamental courses. You can choose among math uh, for economics, uh, for economists or professional ethics. And there is a research seminar. Uh, I will uh, want to also mention this because um, uh, during the first year and the second year, you will have the coursework and thesis. So you will have an opportunity to discuss uh, your paper, uh, your coursework uh, with your students and with uh, professors. So I think it's uh, the best opportunity to learn how to present papers, uh, to have um, the evaluation your, of your paper, some useful comments uh, and advice. So, I think that research seminar is uh, very important. And you can, for example, uh, read papers there um, to do um, something interesting, to un understand how to write this paper and many, many more things. It depends on your profile. So there are different profiles of research seminars, which you can choose among, uh, for example, micro, microeconomics, I think financial studies, so, and many, many more. And so you have different um, professors for each, um, uh, for each track, I would say. So the second semester is uh, the obligatory course is econometrics, and there are many elective courses. For example, if you want to study micro and macroeconomics on deep level, you can go to social and economics networks, uh, to corporate governance um, and macroeconomic policy in emerging economies. There are also um, some courses um, in Russian. There are a little bit more of them, but I'm sure that every year there are opportunities to go uh, not only for um, Russian thought courses, but for English thought. So uh, I think that you will definitely find the course which you will like. Um, so I will send the presentation for you later. It will be um, on the YouTube translation. So you will be able to take a look and also to go for these links. And um, I also uh, put this um, bold um, that opportunities to have uh, like data analytics um, um, courses. Also, uh, second year, you will have also many elective courses. You can also, for example, choose one of these elective courses during your second year and take uh, some disciplines from different master programs. And during the uh, second semester of the second year, you are writing your thesis. You have a practice in some company or research practice in lab as you wish, uh, because I think it's important to gain some practical experience during your studies before you're going to the uh, job market. Um, yes, so uh, also you will have research seminar to present your paper. And for example, uh, in a week, I will also present my paper in uh, HEC because, um, for example, in microeconomics department. Um, so I could practice and professors which know me just gave me some uh, such an opportunity so I could practice. So I would say that um, the attitude towards students in HEC is uh, really very personal and very devoted. And uh, also there are both uh, for more practical courses with data analytics. Okay, uh, I received questions about um, what advice would you give to someone with a weak background in economics and mathematics? Okay, so um, there is a great course by Professor Kirill Bukin on Coursera. He was teaching me um, microeconomics on the research track during my first year of studies. Uh, and he also teaches mathematics for economists. And I took a look at the course and I just did this course on Coursera before my master program, despite the fact that I'm um, okay with math, I would say, but it uh, allowed me to be more prepared for the class at September and October, like this. So I would say that for 
uh, good economist. It depends, uh, of course, um, whether you want to make academic career or you want to have a more practical one. So for a practical, I would say that differentiation and some application and gradient are important, some third theory. For micro and macroeconomics, it's important to know optimization and contactor conditions to ac uh, assess uh, corner solutions, envelope theorem, especially during the Bellman equation, dynamic optimization. But even if you don't know this world, uh, word, it will be okay because a professor will um, um, teach you this and you will be able to uh, study during your studies. And you can go to office hours to professor. They are very open to it. So don't be afraid if you don't know something. And I also received um, the comment whether uh, I have a chance to enter if I have non-economics degree. Yes, you, you are. Of course, if you just want to study, okay, I'll study economics. I don't know what is economics, but um, it's just interesting and maybe well paid. Uh, I don't think that it's um, uh, enough motivation for this. I think you should be curious about it. I think it's okay for bachelor studies, but maybe for master degree, um, it's better to think about more uh, what you really want to do, uh, not just what um, some people recommended you. And um, there are also, uh, there is a link for Coursera uh, in this math course, and there also a link for some useful courses in Coursera, uh, of course free, which you can start it before your uh, master program. So during the quarantine, you can have an opportunity to um, take a look at these courses and a little bit remember something fresh and things like this. And um, also some other questions. Does the student pay for the course re registration after paying school fee or it's an abandoned uh, in the school? So uh, as I know, uh, you pay for um, like the whole program for one year, maybe in, uh, in some trenches, not um, the whole payment. Um, I'm not sure about these details, uh, but you don't have to pay for other courses. And it's great that HEC is like fully transparent university because you can take a look which course is going at this time. You can go to professors' web pages and see what they are teaching and um, to go to their class, maybe better to go to the lecture, but, uh, not the seminar, because there are not many places at the seminar usually, and they're more for group work. Uh, but for the lecture, you can attend like a uh, free viewer, and uh, you can go to professor. I did uh, sometimes like this, and just uh, ask whether I can sit on your uh, lecture, and uh, they, of course, answer you yes. Uh, so you don't have to pay for other courses. Uh, if you, um, But the exception, if you want, for example, to study some foreign languages, uh, I don't know, French, German, etc. Um, if you want to study them in a deeper level, um, you want uh, you can pay for this course, but it's uh, completely additional. It's not in the program. And um, would the international graduate students on the dual program pay the exact fees as paid in Moscow or different fees? Fees um, uh, would be paid according to the partner university. Okay, so it depends on the university because in Luxembourg you don't pay and you can even receive the scholarship. But for example, as I know, in Erasmus University Rotterdam, you have to pay. It's approximately 7,000 euros, as I remember, but uh, it's better to check, of course. And uh, HSC provides some discounts for the studies, so you don't pay as much as some uh, other international students not from HSC pay. So it depends on the program. For example, Sorbonne is also free, Humboldt University is also free. It depends, uh, and I think that Lancaster is paid also. But uh, in general, no. And especially if you're going to exchange, you usually don't pay anything um, as you, you just pay for education in Moscow uh, because there are partner the university. You don't have to pay anything extra. And um, Oksana Butko maybe will uh, also uh, tell you something if I'm, uh, I'm mistaken in the chat. Um, so like this. And um, also important question, what is the workload of the student in the master program in economics and how much uh, time the master degree take? Okay, what I can say that during the first semester is better to study on, uh, only, especially if you're going uh, from the different university because you, um, you need some maybe time to adapt to a new uh, system, 
to some uh, professors to grade uh, grade system, but I don't think that it will take much time. But maybe you have to want to study uh, fundamental courses deeply, so you have to, uh, much time uh, to do some. Um, some, must, some studies. So um, I took a look at my curriculum one year ago. So it, uh, I had more or less 16 classes a week. Each is one hour and 20 minutes each. So usually I had this um, four, four subjects and uh, there, usually there is two lecture, there are two lectures and one tutorial for uh, the lecture material. So I think uh, it's better to um, to study first semester, but I did find <laughs> a, like um, simple opportunities because uh, I wanted to save some money for the Luxembourg. Uh, so I was doing some private teachers in math. Uh, also, I was of course working in my lab and I was doing research, um, usually during weekends. Uh, I had to work for 10 hours a week. Also, I was teaching classes uh, in macroeconomics. I had two classes a week and I was preparing a lot for them because I was, uh, I really wanted to um, like answer all a question that students uh, want to ask me and to be very, very prepared and to be a good professional. So maybe for each class, like for one hour and 20 minutes, I was prepared for five or six hours. Uh, it, de it depended. So because I had to read lecture uh, and solve all by myself. So uh, it was tough, <laughs> but if you are just studying, I think it will be okay for you. Uh, and um, you can have an opportunities to study some subject on a deep level. So I think the best strategy I would say is uh, to study first semester and work from the second one. Um, and how challenges, uh, so it really depends on the person, how you adapt and uh, what is your background. But uh, I would say that that challenge, but my, um, Thing, uh, my uh, thought about it that nothing great can be simple. If your uh, your studies are very simple, you easily pass exams without preparation, and everything is so great. I don't think that you're in the right place. And if you want to study, you need to solve um, exercises. Uh, if you're doing math, you have to solve exercises, you uh, um, solve problems. And uh, in macro, microeconomics, you have to do it. If you want to, um, I don't know, to study corporate finance, you have to do these tables in Excel to. Uh, um, uh, calculate cash flow, weighted average cost of capital, and many, many more things. So you have to practice. It's uh, never, uh, it cannot be simple if you want to study uh, hard and gain knowledge from the studies. So I would say that if you're motivated to do this, you will handle it. And um, I really believe in all of you because it is possible. Because as you uh, see from my story, I came from very, very um, simple, uh, like usual school. And um, because I just wanted to study, uh, I could um, like succeed in it. And of course, uh, nothing can be perfect. I'm not the perfect student. Of course, I made uh, some mistakes. Uh, of course, maybe I was not always preparing for 100%, right? As I wanted because of some circumstances, but I just wanted to study. I like studying, so that's it. Uh, and I would like to also mention University of Luxembourg because I'm studying here and it's been eight months. Um, I've been here, so uh, I think I can uh, share something. Um, yes, and um, uh, what I really want to mention, uh, when I came to Luxembourg, uh, there was a math camp. It was really tough, I would say, because we had uh, two and a half weeks of studies, like five, uh, six hours a day only of uh, subject. It was math and probability theory, statistics. And we had nine homeworks, like four in math, five in probability theory. Some of them were very big, like 30, 40 pages by hand. And you have to handle it in two and a half weeks. But I was so, so happy uh, that I came from HEC because I had great fundamentals. And I would say that everything can be measured in comparison because not all my classmates had uh, this experience. Of course, they studied, uh, studied hard and they uh, gained success, but it was more complicated for them than for me because I'm really thankful to my professors um, who taught me. And I was even crying once uh, that 
Thank you that I really understand everything that professor is talking about while others are sitting like with big eyes and don't understand what is going on. So uh, thank you to see that I had a great fundamentals for the University of Luxembourg. And there is um, quite a repetition in terms of subject with the research program because there is micro macroeconomics. There are two parts and there are some topics which we didn't cover too much. For example, in HSC studies and financial theory, I have never had uh, such a deep financial theory. So um, and uh, it was more theoretical one, but you still need to understand it to do practical stuff and not just trading uh, assets like you want, right? Um, so, and econometrics, it was, um, even though it was like my fourth, uh, maybe a time when I take econometrics. So I did one in bachelor studies, one at the University of Cologne uh, at HEC in the master program on the first year and also um, at the University of Luxembourg, but I couldn't understand it such a, on a deeper level. And all professors are really top. They understand their subject very good. And uh, with some of them, I have uh, very good like um, relations in terms of uh, I can ask questions about my research. I can come, uh, for example, I came to uh, discuss my research topic with uh, professor in mathematics and dynamic program and macroeconomics and for example with a professor from who was teaching econometrics so they give me a very useful advice so it's also a great atmosphere that you can um, come to the office of the professor and uh, to to ask them uh, everything um, you want so they will be very open to you and uh, want to help and the second semester, uh, there are more practical courses. Um, as I can say that uh, there is general equilibrium theory. Okay, it's more like microeconomics, uh, empirical economics and finance. And four out of six small elective courses, which I chose, it was financial stability, uh, risk management, um, identification techniques, which is a continuation of uh, empirical economics course uh, and you have to perform master students is a little bit complicated because you have to pass the master student in HSC and the University of Luxembourg but you can just uh, pass uh, the same um, thesis but uh, the thing is that in HSC uh, the second semester is usually devoted to master thesis while in, H uh, in Luxembourg uh, you have to study till the um, end of June and then in July or August you will pass uh, the master thesis but you can do it during your studies the second semester is a bit easier than uh, the first one I would say and you become more adapted to it um, and I would say that this program is more for people who want to do academic career because uh, some of my students uh, some of my classmates um, wanted more practical experience uh, but of course they gain uh, great fundamentals and some uh, practical ones but uh, I think it's more for academic career uh, yes and um, also uh, one, uh, one more thing I want to mention is that in University of Luxembourg on this program, uh, one of the best students on the program each year are people from HEC. So um, as I mentioned, uh, the best thing is to, com uh, to compare with uh, other universities. And I understand that um, professor in Luxembourg and HEC are teaching in a very high standard. So as you see here, uh, it's campus where I study is uh, Kirberg campus. Uh, so it's not very crowded actually. Um, there is um, uh, a library nearby, uh, but it's uh, really not crowded of people. I would say there are not so many events, student events, but for example, there are many research seminars uh, by uh, Department of uh, Economics and Finance. And there is a learning center at the University of Luxembourg. It's a different campus, Belval campus. It's quite far away. So I would say that the best uh, events, student events are happening there, uh, but um, it's okay for study in Kirberg because you can um, concentrate more on studies, I would say. Uh, and uh, there is a very cool library and um, many opportunities to study, really. Uh, public transportation is um, a very good quality. Uh, there are trains, buses, no subway is in Moscow. 
uh, but you can take the bike um, for the whole, uh, like during the whole year, you just paid 18 euros a year and you can rent it for every 30 minutes. So for example, uh, you go for 30 minutes, then you change and uh, 30 minutes more and etc. So it's a really great opportunity because uh, like bike transportation system is very good in Luxembourg. So you see bike roads and uh, small, um, bike lighters um, also the great uh, there are great dormitories at, um, at Luxembourg so uh, if you saw the first picture of the slide I'm living actually in this region and uh, somewhere uh, he is my uh, house so uh, as you understand um, the you can go to the really good dormitory. Also, the quality of food is really good. You can buy any um, products, any cheese. So it's uh, a little bit complicated with this uh, in Russia. So uh, it's great. And um, also what... Okay, but uh, there are expensive cafes and taxis and all the services are really much more expensive than in Moscow. But... Um, Okay, it's okay. For example, but in uh, the school canteen, uh, like the university canteen, you can eat for four or five euros, right? be a very big meal and you can take uh, it uh, home. So it's okay for the student to survive, I would say. So, um, so what do you regard as the greatest obstacles on the program from the academic point of view in Russia and in Luxembourg concerning courses, structures and working procedures? Okay, so I'm a little bit biased because um, I have some experience of uh, living abroad, so uh, actually I was also going to work and travel program in US, I was living there, I had many things happening to me, uh, and it was very complicated to work, uh, also I was living in Cologne, uh, in Luxembourg, so for me in terms of um, like living point of view, um, nothing is very special, and from academic, like uh, the good um, universities are um, very similar. I cannot say that there are many main differences. I will talk about them a little bit later. But uh, just a bit of the structure of the exams, uh, it was quite different in Luxembourg and the transparency is uh, a little bit different. I will talk about this later. And uh, what did you do in your first year master's program that really helped you in your academics and some mistakes you made that affected your academics direct, uh, directly or indirectly? Of course, everyone makes mistakes but um, not like a very um, crucial one. Of course, uh, something, uh, something I could change, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with what I have now. So what, um, what I can say is that uh, my advice is not uh, being afraid to ask questions, not be afraid to have mistakes. Um, it's completely okay. It's your study process. Um, you, it's better to... Uh, speak uh, with your professors as much as possible, to communicate with your classmates as much as uh, you can. Um, like also do something in advance, but uh, so we are students, so we sometimes uh, go for deadline, uh, before deadline, right? Uh, right before doing something right before deadline, it's okay. Um, and I would say that not be afraid with, um, like helping each other because sometimes uh, you feel that oh it's my work I shouldn't share I mean not sharing to copy paste but um, when you're teaching someone when you explaining someone um, you study uh, by yourself and you start to understand really understand because uh, during my teaching experience I understand that um, I understood math and microeconomics much more deeply when I started to explain it. Yes, uh, also what is um, important and uh, try to make a friend or with whom you will be solving homeworks. I mean, not, of course, not copy pasting, but uh, discussing, um, helping each other in some different moments. For example, sometime you um, help more, uh, some other time um, your friend will help you. So don't be afraid and don't try to be more like individual only. And I uh, found uh, this friend uh, in Luxembourg. So I'm very happy that um, I have um, a friend with uh, whom we're uh, solving um, like all our life problems, I would say, not only academic ones. So to be um, like in a team, if it's possible. And um, I made some, um, Univ uh, differences between universities. So, um, in terms of assessment, 
there are uh, in high school economics, there are, there are usually uh, some intermediate form of control, uh, controls. So exam is usually never 100%. You have some tests, you have some homeworks, you have some discussions, participation. So uh, you will not be afraid that you're coming to exam with 100% uh, weight. So it's usually like this. Uh, at the University of Luxembourg, it's also not the case that exam is 100% usually. But uh, for example, during some courses now, uh, we'll have um, um, the courses which weight more uh, like exams in which weight more. So it's usually 20 to 40 percent on homeworks, presentations, uh, participation, and 40 60 for exam. Uh, and at the University of Cologne, I had very uh, really many exams which um, contributes uh, contributed 100 percent of the marks. So it was very stressful because you're uh, not sure which um, task you will solve. So, for example, you uh, learned um, like uh, 49 out of uh, 50 you know, topics and you have the 50th topic uh, on the exam. So, uh, you don't know. Uh, so, it's, um, I think it's better um, when there is a cumulative system. So, what is, um, and in terms of assessment, how, um, how frequent is it? is it? Usually it's four times a year. So, there are um, four sessions, but usually the uh, first and third, uh, third session after the first and the third module is more uh, light. So it's uh, not uh, like, usually it's not exam, it's just uh, um, some uh, test. Uh, so it will not compute, uh, contribute 100% of your grade, uh, but the ex um, exception is when the um, course is very small one. And uh, in university, at the University of Luxembourg, it's two times a year. And it's very interesting because uh, in HEC, uh, results are usually available by the teacher. They send the um, Excel uh, document with all grades and you see all your classmates' grades. So uh, there is quite a big transparency that you see, which I like. But as I know, in Western Europe and in USA, it's uh, not a good uh, practice, I would say. And in Luxembourg, also, you don't know the grades of others. But uh, what is interesting is uh, that doesn't matter when you pass the exam, you will, um, for example, in October or in January, you will have your results only in February, for example. Um, so uh, for some exams, it's uh, two weeks, one month uh, after exam for some are um, quite longer. But uh, of course, mm, professor already passed the grade, but you don't know them. So they're not evaluating after a couple of months. No, it's just you know their mark a little bit um, after. So for me, it was a little bit of shock, but uh, it's okay for now. I understood the system, so um, I have to adapt. And University of Cologne, it's also uh, results are available to you personally after um, maybe two, three weeks, it depends. And the grades, uh, so in high school economics, they are publicly available and um, they are from t uh, zero to 10. Uh, you pass uh, if you had a four out of 10. In, at the University of Luxembourg, you pass if you had a 10 out of 20. And the University of Cologne, is uh, German system is a little bit different that five is the lowest, one is the highest. And exam period in HEC is uh, quite stressful in terms of that it is usually during one or two weeks. So you have to study much during your semester. So my advice, uh, if you're not, uh, you were not from HEC before, so uh, it's better to study during the semester. But these intermediate formal controls help you to study because uh, when there is the uh, only exam, you usually start to study one week before the exam. So it's not the best strategy. Uh, and at the University of Luxembourg, it's usually one month or like three weeks, it depends. But some uh, during some weeks, you can have three exams uh, in a row. In high school economics, once I had maybe five exams in a week. So it was um, quite complicated, but it makes you study during semester. At the University of Cologne, it's also one month. Also, um, uh, about the feedback. So in HEC, it's very like 100% transparent because uh, there is obligatory anonymous online feedback from each student uh, from, for each uh, course um, in the end of the course, but before uh, exams. So there will be no um, I don't know, evaluation of the person. Uh, and um, you will know the result, uh, like the teacher will know the results only after the session will uh, end. 
So it's a very good, I think, strategy. And uh, as, teach, uh, as a teacher, I also had um, the same that I received grades from my students and anonymous comments. Um, so it's a good feedback. Uh, at the University of Luxembourg, you give uh, the feedback pro, for the class representative. So he uh, asked you whether you like something, but uh, you didn't, and they uh, discussed it uh, during the jury, which is held after exams usually. And University of Cologne, you have uh, a paper feedback. So for me, it's a little bit tricky because uh, when I pass it online, uh, you can um, write anything you, you want. Of course, uh, not bad things. Uh, I mean, um, like a cri a good criticism, it's okay. But uh, if uh, the professor will know uh, how you, your head, handwriting, it's, uh, I think, not the best uh, strategy. I think online is the best. So about the student office and student group. Uh, so I think in all, all universities, uh, there is very good support in terms of international student. uh, students. Um, for example, NHC, I really had a very good relationship with the student office. They helped me in different, different situations. And um, I really, I'm really very, um, very happy about um, what I had during my bachelor's and master's uh, studies, because I could always come and uh, ask something, say, or oh, um, maybe I have some problems or something like this. So they will definitely help you as uh, they can. And I wanted to mention that in HC, you can always press a red button. It's uh, anonymous uh, button and the Dean will um, um, evaluate uh, your concerns. So it's it really works. It really works. And it's amazing that, um, uh, if you don't like something and you see that something bad is happening and uh, they should not be happening something like this, uh, it definitely uh, will have an uh, opportunity to express your mind. Uh, so at the high school of economics, you have your own student cool, uh, group and the course, which I think is uh, great because you are uh, going to classes with the same students, you can uh, learn from them, you can communicate, and you are feeling not lonely. And uh, at the University of Luxembourg, you also have a student group. We have a very small group. It uh, consists of seven, eight students now uh, at... Uh, at the economic research program, we also had small group, but at the applied economics, I know that uh, there, there is a big group usually. But at the University of Cologne, I was taking um, courses from the bachelor program in economics, but uh, the thing is that you don't have any group because everyone is going to the class uh, he wants to, and you usually never meet uh, these people in other class. So it's uh, more com complicated to have an, a friendship, but because of international student provided us many great um, events, we could communicate with international students a lot. And what about the relation between professors and students? I also received uh, this uh, question. So in all um, universities, um, professors are very, um, like um, very happy to receive uh, some questions. Uh, they have an opportunity to have office, uh, office hours. I would say that in high school of economics, it's uh, made in the best way because you can see on the website, the office hours of professor, you can write on uh, uh, an email, but of course you can write on email uh, for every professor. By the University of Cologne, because maybe there is no such a student group and the courses were usually big, uh, you can communicate by email, but it's not so common, I would say, uh, as at the High School of Economics at the University of Luxembourg. Okay, uh, and it's an interesting question, how much does a year in Luxembourg cost? Uh, because it seems like it's free education and of course it's really amazing that you have uh, you can receive grant for 5,000 um, euros. There are also uh, two payments, 3,000 at the beginning, uh, it is paid um, in September and uh, 2000 I didn't receive yet. Um, if uh, everything will be successful, I will receive after all exams and defense will happen. And also there is free accommodation because uh, without it, I could uh, pay uh, 435 euros. So um, it's quite a lot. But to come to Luxembourg, I um, calculated all my expenses. So you have to pay deposit, will, uh, which will be returned, uh, send uh, documents for visa, insurance. Uh, so it's Russian insurance and uh, something like 150 euros per semester. So it's two semester if you buy in Luxembourg. And now I bought one insurance because uh, I was uh, concerned about this um, pandemic. 
Um, so you have to have also in account, uh, on the account some money. So it's usually this sum, uh, more than 1,000 euros for 12 months. Um, so it's roughly 14,000. So it can be a lot, but um, of course you will not spend everything. But for example, because you will receive grant, I think you can uh, take off the uh, 5,000. Uh, so you will have uh, this 9,000. And as I mentioned here, uh, but I'm not sure because I'm not immigration office. I'm not sure how they will evaluate uh, my expenses and documents for visa. There are like notarization, translation, etc. It's quite a lot and um, apostyle, many, many things uh, to come to Moscow and some resident permit uh, after arrival, you pay 80 euros. Then you pay uh, 60 euros per, for doctor to have um, evaluation of your health that you can perform studies so uh, to come to luxembourg you have to pay this sum and you have to um, to have on deposit at least i think nine thousand euro so um, it's better to start uh, saving right uh, about the scholarship um, there are actually many opportunities to have a scholarship it doesn't depend on whether you are a russian citizen or it, um, international student. So you, you um, if you are going uh, for the free play, place, you receive state scholarship, which is um, quite um, not big, but you can pay for the dormitory. Because for example, dormitory in Russia cost approximately 20 euros. So you th see the difference. Of course, the scholarship is not very uh, high, but you can cover uh, your accommodation. So it's, I think, a really good opportunity. Uh, so um, the dormitory I was living in cost uh, 1,450 um, uh, rubles, something like this. And you can also receive increased stage scholarship um, if you are doing research, you have uh, some um, organizing events, participating in events, volunteering, etc. You can receive from uh, 5,000 to 20,000 rubles. So exchange course is um, approximately 80 euros, uh, 80 rubles per one euro and partner fund scholarship and financial aid. And you know, um, this there was one exact moment as I understood that HEC is really my family. Because uh, when I was during my bachelor studies, um, I was studying, uh, my father died and um, I didn't receive uh, any help from even my own country because it was very complicated in terms of bureaucracy. And etc. But uh, I didn't. I didn't know even about the opportunity that I can ask any help. But because I was like 20 years old. But uh, the thing is that um, I just instantly said this to uh, my math professor uh, from my first year of studies because we communicate with her, and she's very um, like very kind person and she said Dasha you should definitely apply and in a couple of days uh, they sent me uh, an aid and it just you understand that um, it doesn't matter what will happen with you that HSC will help you because it's really a family yeah so um, it's uh, complicated to uh, talk about this but still um, this is one important moment I would say uh, how uh, HSC um, really um, like signed uh, the uh, how they perform uh, they how they um, their attitude to students sorry for uh, so also very very important thing uh, that I received many many questions about which opportunities to work uh, work I will have part-time jobs uh, jobs on the campus on international companies so on the campus you can work uh, as a teaching assistant I would say there is teacher and teaching assistant um, you can go to professor uh, which um, which sub, um, who subject you passed well, maybe from eight to 10 um, um, points. So um, it should be uh, said that you have to pass um, your course very good and you uh, maybe will ask some smart questions and uh, the professor will uh, see you. Uh, so you uh, can ask uh, to be his research um, 
or her research assistant, uh, a research assistant, teaching assistant, uh, or you can be a research intern at the lab. Uh, there are many, many labs in different, different tops, uh, topics. I will talk about this a little bit later. And you can also do a project with your professors. So for example, I did uh, the project in Latvia. I was helping in um, like, um, um, uh, helping to do the book uh, in microeconomics uh, in Latvia, in uh, so it could be um, beautiful and correct some mistakes. So it was also an interesting project. So if you will perform well, uh, professors uh, can help you a lot. But it is from the second semester because first semester you study usually and your performance uh, somehow yourself and from the second semester you can ask for an opportunity. But I would say um, a little bit a mistake because um, you shouldn't wait for the second semester to ask. You should uh, do like this, uh, as I think that you should study hard if you want to, of course, um, to go for the work at the campus then you want to come uh, it's better to communicate with the professor to ask good questions and etc and then maybe in the um, um in the middle of the course you can even ask about uh whether he has some research um assistantship opportunities or teaching assistant because in hc uh, you have to do it a little bit in advance so if you will ask in january for the second semester no one will already accept you you should ask usually during november december so it's better to do it in advance and outside there are many international companies of course if you don't know russian it's a bit uh complicated because it's uh like this in every country in Luxembourg I don't uh, speak French so for me it's almost impossible to find a job in some central bank or something like this which I want to uh, so uh, it, it's in every country but in big four big three companies you can definitely go there and uh, when I was actually uh, applying uh, it was quite complicated to do this because I had to um, um, to buy some permit to work um, in Russia, but now it's much easier. So you should definitely try to apply. You can do freelance and uh, private teaching. For example, if you are uh, speaking good English, you can um, teach English uh, privately to some uh, pupils at the school uh, or do it online. So there are plenty of things. And uh, for example, uh, from my own experience, uh, the best um, opportunity to understand some su a subject is to teach it. So for example, you can uh, try to teach your own classmates for free uh, for the first semester, and then you will understand the subject and um, start the teaching after if you like this. So there are plenty of opportunities. But yes, you can work as teaching assistant, but um, from the second semester usually. And I also received uh, the question um, about uh this currently i'm working uh, to an important company and i'm doubting about the leaving my job and to go to study at hc do you think you will be able to find a better job after studying at HEC? Uh, it really depends on your company where you're working to because uh, maybe it's a so great company that you will not even need any education but i would say that um if you have an opportunity to go to at hc go there um, I would say like this because and but um, you have to um, take into consideration many factors such as uh, what is um, your program which you like and um, yes I think uh, that is an important part um, but I think that HC will give you many opportunities and in terms of networking in terms of community in terms of many su a great subject and you can go to any other subject you want to to some programming or I don't know to philosophy or um, I don't know to sociology to many many uh, subjects uh, if you want you can go for free so you will definitely have some opportunities but uh, of course it's your choice because I don't understand your background uh, whether it will be a very uh, like uh, great uh, step forward uh, maybe you have amazing background and um, the same as NTC, HSC provides so I'm not sure but uh, if you wondering uh, you can ask me in um, in chat or mention something or you can write me on email on Facebook I will put contacts uh, contacts um, 
Also for a career, there are really many opportunities because uh, there are some courses with, with ACCA uh, certification. There are opportunities to internships, which is provided by HSC. Uh, there is um, HEC family, uh, which are posting some uh, job opportunities also. There are business case championships, some business uh, case schools, uh, good networking opportunities, and of course, uh, meeting with any company representatives from starting from government institution to startups and uh, big four companies and no big three companies. And there are also joint departments with big four companies. And uh, yes, uh, HC graduates found uh, their place in many, many companies. Uh, so I was working in um, one of uh, big four companies, uh, but I understood that I'm more, I really want more maybe academic career or some research department. And uh, also some people asked me about the doctoral school. Uh, also, there is very uh, really great doctoral school. There is um, usual track and academics, um, uh, PhD program, which is like full time uh, with a um, higher scholarship. Uh, so there's definitely an opportunity to go to doctoral school. And especially if you uh, study for master's degree, some professor will know you and give you recommendation with is more valuable because um, they see the quality of professor. So you will be much easier admitted to doctoral school. And there are the principle of a Western PhD program, and there are many opportunities to go uh, to go into international laboratories and uh, work for, with uh, great professors. So there are some of the research labs. So I'm working in the international laboratory for macroeconomic analysis, and it really became one of uh, like my family because my colleagues inspire me really a lot. They are top profess, uh, professionals in their spheres, and uh, we have people who are working with debt crisis and are more about it um, than with macroeconomic policy, fiscal policy, economic growth, um, some central banking, uh, pro, um, um, and uh, making forecasts. And uh, there, you can find uh, any professor you like. So uh, HC has uh, many, many great professors and you will definitely find one um, who, will, um, who you will like. Uh, and um, what is also important that it's a support from uh, laboratory. For example, during uh, 2018 and 2019, I went to Barcelona uh, Graded School of Economics uh, summer school and I um, listened to courses by top professor, uh, professors, but what I understood is that uh, professors at HC in Lux, uh, from Luxembourg are teaching at a very good level and uh, completely comparable with um, uh, Barcelona Graduate School of Economics. So um, it's a very good way to have uh, such experience. And also you can attend conferences. Uh, for example, this is um, the photo uh, from April International Conference and you can go abroad. Um, and uh, even if you don't um, work for the institution or the lab, you can uh, maybe ask for help from the endowment fund. Um, and you should um, th think about these opportunities as professors and etc. And uh, I think uh, it's time for your um, questions. So these are my contacts and I will go to the chat. Other talks and seminars are in English. Uh, it depends on the programs, uh, usually yes. And if uh, there will be even one international student in the class, uh, the course will be held in English if it's um, possessed. So of course uh, it's like this and um, um, international students are in a great support. Yes. Um, all the electives uh, ta uh, taught in English. Uh, okay, uh, so it depends um, on the subject, but um, there are some. Uh, okay, scholarship opportunities, I talked about it. Um, what are the fees to be paid that received a provisional full tuition scholarship in applied economics? So if you are on the full tuition scholarship, you don't have to pay anything. So for example, I um, didn't pay for education and um, it just depends on your program. Maybe you have a discount, so you have uh, to pay some of the, uh, of the fees. But if you're on the full uh, scholarship, no. Um, internship, uh, they can be paid and not paid. It depends. 
Um, how can a student who receives such scholarship find a job or a student assistantship to sustain the expense of doing the duration of degree? I answered the question. So after, uh, after the first semester, but you should um, think about it in advance. Uh, okay, after education in Russia, do uh, Russian government give opportunity to international students to work in Russia? Uh, okay, there is um, also an opportunity. So uh, if you, um, as I'm not aware, but uh, as I, I know, that uh, after you studied, uh, receive a degree from Russian university, you can work in Russia. Um, it depends on your visa because, for example, from Ukraine and Russia, there are um, a little bit um, maybe um, good, uh, not scarcities, but agreements because we can stay in Russia at least for 90 days and then you can have um, um, an opportunity to stay longer if you find a job. So it's, uh, I think um, the strategy is the same, uh, is the next, that uh, the best strategy is to find the job maybe during second year and stay there and ask uh, your employer to, um, after the internship to have um, visa support. I think the best strategy as uh, the same, I think in every country. How com uh, competitive it is to get accepted for the dual degree programs. Okay, do applied economic students typically get accept, uh, accepted to them? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, there are, um, it is competitive. I'm not sure because I was not in admissions office, Mm, but uh, what they are looking at is motivation letter, recommendations, um, your grades, but I cannot uh, really um, access, uh, assess uh, whether I, how many um, students per one place is it. But I think that uh, international students office uh, will definitely help you and uh, Oksana Butko is uh, just uh, amazing specialist and she knows I think answers to any questions uh, about international students and she will um, She's very, very helpful. So um, I got to know from all the opportunities from the presentations, which are given uh, on the dual degree. They are usually held during September, October. Uh, but yes, uh, you can, for sure. And applied economic students, of course, get uh, accepted. For example, I know many uh, students who got accepted from applied economics to Sorbonne University. Also uh, to Erasmus um, um, University Rotterdam. So from HC, there are people from uh, Economics Research Program. Me, uh, also my friend, she is from um, Financial Markets uh, Program, and um, uh, also one boy is from uh, strategic, uh, strategic Corporate Finance. So uh, it doesn't depend on the program. Um, were those bachelor's classes you taught, uh, taught in English or in Russian? Okay, uh, so if uh, you're talking about macroeconomics classes, which I was uh, doing is, they were in Russian. So I don't have uh, such a big experience in presenting, um, presenting in English, I would say in, in terms of uh, teaching, but I'm trying to. So this presentation was um, a challenge for me also. Um, so, but uh, in terms of uh, usual classes in bachelor, there are, uh, there were some um, subject English, some in Russian. Can a student switch from one program to another, uh, from switching from economics research to applied? Okay. Um, um, so, uh, I know people who were doing this. So, it's better to do it in September. You can switch from the economic research program to applied economics. I knew such people. And uh, I also knew people who um, successfully um, got to, um, to economics research program uh, for, uh, from applied economics. But you also have to do it in September, usually in October, because otherwise the difference in course will be significant. So it's better to do it in advance if you understand that it's not your program. Uh, I think it's better to ask um, academic supervisors of the program. Uh, they uh, can be seen uh, on the website. Okay. Um, I want to know whether I have to apply for a scholarship as an international student or you must select their, your own students for the scholarship. Um, so I didn't understand uh, very good the question. Um, 
what I think is that uh, scholarship as an international student, uh, if for not dual degree programs, you can just apply, uh, apply uh, it doesn't matter for increased state scholarship or this uh, partners funds uh, scholarship, um, it doesn't matter, but um, and also it doesn't matter actually for dual degree programs. So there are special programs for citizens from Russia, but they're not from university usually. I uh, know that there was a program global education, but uh, that is it was I know, but I've never Never had such um, any difference with uh, people who are from Russia actually uh, in any case so I had the same opportunities yes okay mm. Can you change your course on arrival at HEC within the department? Uh, yes, there are many departments at HEC. Uh, for example, departments of theoretical, of uh, applied economics, of mathematics, of financial market, like school of finance. Uh, and you can choose um, some subject from these uh, different programs. But um, what I can say that uh, you have to consult with your student office. They are very helpful uh, and uh, they will definitely help as much as possible. So you should ask them, but I think it's possible, right? Uh, of course, before you pass an exam, but yes. Uh, for the degree program and EDEC, um, I'm not sure about this uh, program actually, uh, but I think you can apply after HEC. Uh, I'm not sure about this question because there are many, many partners at HEC program. So uh, you uh, where you can consult is the website on the uh, study abroad HEC. They have all the partner universities you can take a look. Uh, so the master thesis will be written in the second university in dual degree program. Yes, actually the strategy is more like that you're um, re uh, uh, writing a degree, um, uh, master thesis, thesis uh, at the dual degree program. Uh, so, for example, um, I uh, chose an um, advisor uh, in Luxembourg uh, and chose his topics. And my advisor at HC uh, just um, supported me in my decision because, of course, uh, it's more complicated to uh, communicate with professor in Moscow during your exchange uh, or dual degree program. So uh, it's better maybe to find the advisor uh, at your dual degree program and to communicate with um, professor maybe with whom you were writing uh, coursework and he will uh, or she will help you definitely. So um, people all understand that you are doing your dual degree and uh, that's it. And uh, one important thing that you can um, pass your master thesis not in May as usual students, but you can uh, defend it in November. So if you're doing your dual degree, so you have two opportunities to pass it in May or pass it in November. Uh, I decided to pass it in November to have a more time to prepare it because in Luxembourg, uh, you choose your advisor in February usually. So um, it's uh, impossible to write a good thesis in such a small time. Do all students get a grant, uh, the Luxembourg grant? I mean, do you automatically get if you go to Luxembourg? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, actually, no, because uh, there are not um, too many places. As I understand, there were two students who got the grant in this year, uh, me and my friend. But um, another student from HEC, he, as I understand, he received uh, the student job in Luxembourg. So uh, it's a small opportunity to work uh, like a research assistant for a professor to have uh, some um, some money to cover your expenses. Um, uh, you're welcome. Uh, for, thank you for presentation. Uh, what uh, to your mind is more practical to, to, uh, to take full master program uh, at a foreign uni or to take double program? Okay, for me it was um, quite complicated decision in terms of uh, that actually I did um, exchange semester in Germany but uh, what I understand that uh, HEC is still uh, the university which is um, I don't know which is more in my heart I would say that I feel more like in my plate or uh, it's my uh, my cup of tea right uh, so I feel that um, HEC is a little bit more comfortable, comfortable because I know professors, professors know me, so it's a bit biased. And um, 
what affected my decision is that uh, I had an opportunity to teach uh, courses in macroeconomics and uh, that is why I decided to do this and to understand whether I'm able to talk for big um, classes and sometimes I had um, a talk uh, for 80 students so it was an amazing experience that has uh, that is why for me it was optimal because I could do double degree uh, at the program and to, to uh, teach it the first year of my studies and also to be in a lab. Uh, is there room for athletic sports and competition at HEC? There should be one at Pokrovka, as I understand, but I'm not very uh, sure about this. But HEC provides some opportunities to do sports, of course. They are in different buildings. Uh, it was before, it was during my bachelor studies. Uh, but you can go to any kind of sport, right? Into the uh, maybe athletics and uh, to swimming pool, uh, to do dancing and many, many things. And there are, um, of course, teams. NHC, I know um, a football team, and I'm not very um, um, proficient in this question, but uh, I, uh, I feel that you will definitely find. And in Moscow, there are many opportunities to do this, so it's okay. Um, you did internship at one of the big four. Was it a paid internship? Yes, uh, it was a paid internship on the fourth year to get a more practical experience to understand whether I really want to work in the company. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed it because um, I understood many things about working in the company. So it's great. And um, it was paid internship. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm able to discuss the payments, but it's, um, it's not a big payment, but uh, you can pay for your life expenses if you're not renting a flat. Or it's uh, like if you're renting one, um, um, one room flat, it's uh, the only um, expense you can cover by money you received on this job. Yes, but um, it's not free. It's not free, it's okay. So you'll be able for work for money and uh, cover your expense. I understand that it's very important. Um, thank you very much for uh, your response. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you be upgraded to full scholarship at HEC from partial scholarship to do, um, due to extreme financial constraints? Um, you should def definitely go to the faculty members there are special people who are doing um, this job uh, i mean in uh, helping in terms of um, very high um, like different situations um, so uh, you can help uh, can uh, help if your parents um, are earning not too much as i understand uh, i'm not sure till what age is it but i think till you um, um, till you finish the university um, and you should ask because, for example, I know that there are social scholarship for uh, people who could not afford studies or cannot cover expenses uh, because it's a very common situation. So I think it's possible, yes. And you should definitely go to professors to ask some opportunities to work. And I'm sure that if you are hardworking and you're motivated and you have a fire in your eyes, you will definitely have um, the success in it. Roughly how many students is admitted to the master program, applied economics and economics research program? Um, yes, it's a good question because uh, economics research program is usually a small program. Um, so in my year, it was maybe 10 people in the beginning that some people understood that they want uh, to have more practical experience and uh, they just uh, changed to apply economics, but uh, people who wanted to do research, they stayed and uh, had uh, great students there and uh, very interesting uh, personalities, so it's great. So um, in my year, it's roughly five students. I think that uh, 2019, uh, course is actually quite um, more, maybe 10 people, it depends, but it's a small program, but it's great when you're sitting uh, in the lecture hall, like a couple of people uh, attending lecture and you receive all the attention from professor and you can ask any question, you can make great discussions, so it's a good opportunity and in uh, applied economics, I think it's roughly 60, 70, as I know, it depends and depends on the year. What are the benefits of being the best graduating student at the end of your program? Um, I'm not sure about um, 
the best student. Um, there are uh, there are ranking system. It's uh, important to mention that usually grades are public available. Um, before it was all the grades. Now it's only your GPA. But you have a ranking system, and in terms of ranking, you receive scholarship and uh, can receive um, tuition um, uh, discount and etc. So I'm not sure who, uh, what uh, the, the best person uh, received, um, but I think that uh, it's not in terms of um, some money. Uh, they can uh, maybe make um, the speech uh, at the graduation, but I'm not sure how it will be done this year, unfortunately. So um, I'm not sure, but um, for example, if you're the best graduating student, if you're applying for a PhD, it will be a great uh, plus into your CV and your motivation. So it will be a definitely great. Um, is it possible for one to defer uh, his admissions to next academic year? Uh, I'm not sure about this um, thing. Uh, let me show you the admissions also. So uh, there will be links, of course, I will send them uh, about the graduate admission, which um, it's more relevant for you. And there are contacts um, by Oksana Butko and Ludmila Zasimova. Uh, so um, you can maybe ask uh, them or maybe it's better to ask me even your academic uh, supervisor, because I understand that there are circumstances, in, uh, circumstances this year which we, uh, can affect your uh, graduation and the borders, but I'm sure that something will be um, made to help you, or maybe some online courses. Yes, one of the um, yes, so we'll take like, like this. One of the benefits of the red diploma make things easy if you want to stay in Russia. Yes, uh, there is one opportunity if you get the uh, red uh, diploma. So if you have uh, only grades like uh, A. A grade, and um, what else? A grade, or you can have B grades, but their proportion should be uh, less than one fourth of the grade. So others, you have to have A. Um, and the benefit is that you can apply um, for, um, I think, the um, like residence permit after this. So uh, yes, there is a benefit of uh, the red diploma. Do I need to prepare linear algebra before the start of the studies? I think it's useful because um, where you need linear algebra. Um, I always like talking about this because it's, uh, I think math is very important in economics. Uh, for example, you can um, have matrices in macroeconomics. You ha can have matrices, uh, all matrices are in econometrics uh, because even ordinarily squares can be done through matrices. So I think it's important to understand linear algebra. What you should know, which topics uh, do you need is, um, okay, matrices and operation with them. I think eigenvalues and eigenvectors, this is what I needed in Luxembourg. So it's important, I think, um, because they are used in macroeconomics, for example. So yeah, I think it's uh, good to prepare for linear algebra. And you can take uh, online courses on Coursera. They are also free. Um, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, for someone who cannot focus for uh, too many hours per day, do you think it's possible to handle the coursework for the OK, um, I think applied economics, right? Uh, Master of Arts. Um, OK, so uh, I understand your question because uh, I'm not perfect at all, uh, because sometimes I can be very motivated. I can study all day, all night. I can uh, go to 24 hours cafe and do uh, the project there. And um, so it's a, actually a very good uh, thing in Moscow. Uh, just a small comment that in Luxembourg, uh, as in the whole Europe, uh, all supermarkets are closing at night, at uh, seven, at eight, and they're not usually working on uh, Sundays. Uh, exception is a Russian store, uh, Asian store, and uh, Indian store, uh, which I know uh, if you have uh, or some kiosks, so you can go there on Sunday. So it's uh, not very uh, usual for me. 
uh, and I had the same problems in um, Germany, but in Moscow, there are so many opportunities for this. Like you have 24 seven stores, you can go by on Sunday, you can stay at university for 24 hours a day in at the library. And uh, you can go to for, uh, for 24 seven cafes, you can study there. And this atmosphere in Moscow, uh, I really enjoy it. And it's different in Luxembourg because in Moscow, uh, there is really great pace. Everyone is going somewhere, running, and uh, it's crazy a bit, but I like it. Um, for not very long, maybe uh, time period, I need to have rest after. Uh, but everyone in cafe sometimes is uh, working on the laptop. I like this atmosphere of Starbucks where everyone is working on the laptop. Even professors come, they can come there. And um, I really saw one professor, Konstantin Sonin, in Starbucks. He was uh, just uh, sitting near me, and he also was working on his laptop. Um, so I really like this um, atmosphere in Moscow. You really feel like you're a student. You're super motivated. Uh, and in Luxembourg, it's more peaceful. But you have, of course, opportunities to go to libraries uh, till maybe 10, 11 even sometimes. So it's still OK. But uh, the pace is more quiet. It depends on your preferences. Uh, so um, about hours per day, um, it's also very complicated to be always motivated. And sometimes I'm very procrastinating. It depends on the day. I have this cycle, like uh, sinus uh, um, cycle. I would say that sometimes I'm very efficient. Sometimes I cannot do anything. So it's OK. I think just the best strategy is to do a little bit on your uh, thesis, on your coursework, and maybe have a good um, communication with your uh, advisor uh, and do some commitments to him so uh, or to her uh, so to say like oh in a week I want to have uh, a meeting so <laughs> you have to prepare for a meeting is the best strategy I like um, yes yeah, so of course it's possible of course uh, you shouldn't hesitate and think that you cannot do anything you I um, I definitely understand the, that you can do everything you want just um, some motivation and the goal you have in front of you um, to understand it. Uh, how does one get the right, a right diploma? So as I mentioned, you have to have A's and B's. So uh, you have to have all grades above uh, or equal to six out of 10. So six, seven is actually a B. Eight, nine, 10 is A uh, grade. So uh, the pro as I understand, the proportion of uh, B grades should be no more than one of four, uh, like 25%. Um, so it's like this, and you shouldn't, um, and uh, you shouldn't have um, C grades. So if you have at least one C, uh, then you will have no red diploma. But um, I think the most important to have good grades in maybe math subjects, uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics, econometrics, this core subject or subject which are your, um, like if you, for example, want to work in investment fund, uh, maybe um, it's important to have good probability, you have to have good uh, marks on financial markets and maybe corporate finance and know uh, if you're applying to some uh, maybe consulting company. So it depends on where you plan to. If you want to go to PhD, yes, grades are important. Uh, and if you want to apply to some maybe, um, I don't know, research assistantship, but in uh, the work opportunities. I think that uh, even the uh, the fact that you have that dip uh, diploma at HEC matters for um, uh, for employees because even you have the vacancies, uh, they say please uh, only this university respond. Uh, all, only this university graduates respond like HEC, Moscow State University, um, New Economic School, and uh, something like this. So HEC is a really good signaling. So is in microeconomic sing uh, signaling is a very good. Um, uh, way to like uh, diploma of HEC really matters, I would say. Okay, so I think I answered all questions in Zoom. If you have any other questions, please ask me. Um, do the library close in the night? Um, actually, um, in Luxembourg, yes, uh, because there is a good library, it's a learning center. I think it's 
let me show. Yeah, there is a learning center here. It's very beautiful. Uh, so there are many, many places and it's inspired, but uh, the library at HEC is uh, really amazing and you can uh, stay there for 24 hours. So this is uh, the library. Actually, it has many stages, uh, many floors, I would say. So it's amazing. And I tested 24 hours um, option because I was really preparing for exam and you can lie on these sofas. Yes, if you're very tired and uh, there were quite a lot of students, even in the beginning of September, uh, who were staying in the sofas and uh, who were um, like studying something. So it's great. Uh, and uh, there were some uh, blankets and uh, pillows, uh, if you want. So it's just amazing atmosphere and these coffee shops. Uh, I just like these uh, coffee shops and I also have uh, coffee uh, here because we can uh, have some coffee in Luxembourg on the bakery, uh, not in the cafe. Um, so yes, I like this atmosphere. Uh, how is life in the dorm? Yes, it's a good question because um, let me a little bit explain that in Moscow, uh, I didn't mention it, sorry, uh, there are many, many dormitories uh, in different parts of Moscow. Some of them are far away, some of them are in the center. So before I was living quite far away, I had to go uh, by um, bus, then by train, and then by subway. But it's okay, because during this time, I was just studying, and I was reading so many books that time, actually, and uh, I could prepare, because uh, now when I'm living not far away, I don't have uh, too much time to read in the bus. Uh, so it's like this. Uh, so uh, what in terms of dormitories, all of them are very good quality. Of course, it's uh, sometimes not the Euro, uh, I don't know how to say, um, amazing uh, furniture or um, I don't know, gr uh, super great accommodation, but they're absolutely okay if you uh, to live. So there are different kinds of dormitories. Some of them are flats. So usually in the flat there are three, um, maybe uh, one, two, three, or four uh, rooms. Uh, in each of them, there are usually from two to uh, three people. So uh, maybe it will be a little bit comfortable for people who are used to staying in one uh, room, but um, it, it's okay, it's okay. You can always um, have fun with your neighbors. Uh, I was living in the flat type. Uh, also, um, during my master's, uh, master's studies, I was living uh, in the dormitory in the center of Moscow. It was on the Sokol. Um, and uh, it was good, but uh, like accommodation is a little bit worse in terms of conditions, but in the center, so I cannot ask more. And there are like block system that there are um, two rooms in the block uh, with a toilet and um, all these conditions, but um, you have to go to cook on the first floor. Um, so it's not very comfortable, but actually I was um, working much. So I came home, usually came home really late from uh, university. Yes, university uh, closed uh, at 11 p.m. in Moscow, uh, usually. So yes, it's like this. So I didn't uh, cook too much, but uh, in Luxembourg, I cook more. Uh, in terms of uh, in Luxembourg, you also cannot usually choose the, your dormitory. You just ask whether uh, there is a place. And uh, I'm living in the center, in the historical center of Luxembourg. So I'm, I'm very lucky in terms of this. Um, and yes, it's uh, conditions are very good. Uh, I have my own room. So you, you see a little bit my room uh, and I have uh, my own, um, own toilet and shower uh, and we have shared kitchen for five people, but I don't see my neighbors very often actually. So uh, it's like this, um, but it's very comfortable. And um, in terms of transportation, I need, just need to have a bus to take a bus, go uh, there just like two minutes to the bus. Uh, they're going each 15 minutes. So sometimes it's not very comfortable, but it's okay. You uh, stick to the schedule. Um, also, what is important? Um, yeah, so you just take one bus. Usually it's completely not crowded and you have always a place in Moscow. It's usually very crowded, but I'm okay with this. Uh, I can even start with a computer when I'm staying and just type in something. I have even a photo like this how I'm studying. So Moscow makes me be a, a little bit more motivated, I would say, because of this space. 
Um, yes, I think it's all in terms of uh, dormitories. And here you leave uh, one person in a room. Um, just a second, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, thank you very much for uh, having, for wishing me good luck. Uh, our dorms four or five where um, um, students uh, stay far from the faculty. Uh, I'm not very sure about the dormitories uh, four or five because I was living in Dubki. So it's uh, Odinsovo, uh, near Odinsovo city um, or town. Uh, and then I was living in the dormitory number one. But you can take a look uh, on the map. Uh, the, so there are like dormitories of HEC, you can tap them. And all they have the addresses and you can just uh, understand. So Pokrovka campus, you can just also type the uh, Pokrovka uh, campus because um, I'm not sure, so sure about these uh, dormitories. Um, but it really depends on the dormitories. Uh, for some, you have only to take uh, 30 minutes from the door to the door. For some of them, it's one hour uh, or one hour and a half. But if you uh, you can have this opportunity as a long uh, trip to study and to read some papers, books, etc. I have a master's degree in economics. Now I want to ask, uh, I will have to go for master's degree or I can go to the PhD economics. Okay, um, important thing also, for HEC, you can go straight, of course, to PhD. You don't have to make um, master's in, um, you're not obliged to. Um, for example, uh, in Luxembourg, the situation is a bit different. What I mean that, for example, to our program, uh, quantitative economics and finance, you cannot apply it just from your bachelor studies. You need or to have one year or two years of master's degree and uh, or uh, you have to have one year at HEC, like on the in the partner university. So it counts like one year. So it's a little bit different. So what is uh, interesting is that in Moscow, I usually had um, people uh, who are of the same the same age, like maybe uh, 22, 23, 21, something like this. Uh, some uh, of people who are a little bit older, but not such a big difference. In in Russia, it's usually like that, that you go to bachelor studies, and then you go exactly to the master's or wait for a couple of years and go. But in Europe, it's uh, completely different. You can have master's degree in 30, 40, 50, it doesn't matter till uh, uh, the age you want. So it's like this. And uh, all my class, uh, many of my classmates are actually already have uh, wives and husbands. And uh, some of them have even children. And they are really heroes for me because uh, I don't understand how it is really possible to combine everything. But as some people say that the more uh, things you have, the more efficient you are. So I think it's a good strategy also. So um, some of them are um, above 30, uh, some of them um, below 30. So it doesn't matter in Luxembourg. So um, the, my uh, answer for your question in PhD, you can uh, go directly to PhD. Uh, you can go to quarter. Um, um, admission. Uh, so it's just uh, some places um, which are held by, um, are provided by Russian government. And uh, I applied for quota for three times. So bachelor's, master's and PhD. Can I take Russian uh, language class at HEC? Although I'm pursuing a program taught in English. Of course, of course, there are many opportunities for uh, international students and you definitely can have um, free classes in Russian. Uh, I didn't take them because it's my native language, but I knew uh, people who were taking classes in Russian and uh, the teachers there are amazing. Uh, for example, this way I took the class at the University of Cologne in German. So it's also great. And in Luxembourg, you also can take the courses in French or German, but the thing is that usually they are held in different campus and to go there you have to take bus and train. So it's outside of the center, I'm living in the center, and this campus in, in, uh, during, near the French border. So it's not very comfortable and usually that time we had classes, we had also the classes at the university, so I could not go there. Uh, what are the some extracurricular activities you participated um, in that you help you in HEC most? Um, okay, so um, sometimes I was uh, volunteering a little bit on some events, uh, for example, an HEC day or in some career fairs, uh, but maybe not too much. Um, and I could do more, I would say. Um, 
what else? Mm. Um, I participated in the student council a bit I, in Keystone Society to organize some events uh, connected with uh, some uh, people who are coming to HEC um, to organize uh, some registration and etc. What else? Um, I think the TA activities, I didn't mention it, sorry. So what, um, how did I work in HEC? I was um, a TA for maybe four times, I would say. So I was doing um, for financial accounting for LATIEH. So it's um, a program to make uh, the papers very beautiful and presentations for academic career. Um, and there is a great course in Coursera by Daniel Fedorov, uh, which is uh, teaching at LATIEH. So I was teaching assistant for him. Uh, also, I was a teaching assistant for financial, uh, for international finance and for macroeconomics. So at first I was teaching assistant. I mean, I was grading students like they had small tests, not exams, of course. Uh, and after this time, the next year, I became a teaching assistant. I provided tutorials and seminars and it was an amazing experience because I had just um, like... Uh, uh, I don't know, experience. So professors know me, uh, knew me and knew that I'm interested in macroeconomics and um, I can teach uh, and um, they saw my presentation maybe. And of course, I'm very, very uh, thankful to my research advisor and uh, people who support me there uh, in HSC because I still feel that anytime I come there, I feel uh, like in my family. So it's amazing and uh, maybe uh, I was not all, all with the best student I would say but uh, the belief in me that I can do this is amazing so I'm very thankful um, okay so I think this teaching assistantships uh, helped me so uh, due to uh, teaching assistants assistantship sorry uh, I got uh, a position like I had a project with a professor I was teaching assistant for HSC offers me 25% scholarship, but I'm searching for full scholarship. Uh, please guide because I got 58 square. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how to do this because um, maybe some people will refuse to go to HSC. Maybe you have more opportunities, but I think it's better to talk with admissions office about this subject because uh, I didn't have uh, this experience. I cannot um, help you too much in this, but um, I'm sure that academic um, supervisor or uh, people from international office will definitely try to help you as much as they can. But uh, of course, they cannot promise anything. Please, how high are the chances of getting admitted to into the direct PhD in economics program at HEC after completion of the master applied economics degree? Of course, you can do this. Um, it's uh, absolutely normal. Like economics research program, uh, pro program is possessed like uh, a program to go to PhD, right? Uh, but it's completely okay because applied economics also offers you great courses, uh, so you could. Um, make uh, research and uh, it, of course the chances are very high. Uh, it's not a problem at all. You don't have to hesitate. Um, is the dorm more cost uh, if it's more closed? Okay, okay. Uh, is it possible to have more financial help? I get um, 50% uh, scholarship, but I was expecting 100 because I have limited financial means. Um, Okay, so um, I think it doesn't really matter because uh, all prices for dormitories range in from 1,000 rubles to 2,000. So it's really not much in comparison with uh, European universities. Even in Germany, I paid like 200 uh, euros. So actually uh, during my uh, time in Germany, I didn't have financial support. So I just didn't pay for education, but I have to pay, had to pay for all Ex uh, life expenses. So it was uh, quite complicated, but it was uh, only for four months. It was okay. Yes. So uh, in terms of scholarship, yes, it's better to go to admissions office. But um, if you have limited financial means uh, or you can um, we work during uh, during summer because during first uh, semester maybe it's uh, can be more complicated or you can apply to some pro uh, scholarship. Um, maybe I will try to put some links in YouTube people find if I will find something uh, for you. 
but I think it's better to do like this, to study hard, and maybe you will even have an opportunity to go for free education. Uh, so there, there were uh, people like this, and I know really great people who just maybe instantly they had uh, no opportunity to have a full uh, tuition, but after they got um, for 100% um, discount. So it's possible, you just need to study hard. So uh, maybe it's the best option to, to try. And after the first semester, you really can ask your student office whether uh, there are some budget places. Maybe some people left the program because of their circumstances or their decisions. So um, I think you will have a chance. Are tuition fees paid before entering Russia? Um, I'm not sure because um, so, um, I didn't pay. Uh, for example, at the University of Cologne, I paid tuition fee. It was something like 270 uh, 70 euros and I had to pay it before. But I think um, you should ask uh, about the admissions office more about it. Uh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, about the scholarship um, for PhD. It's important because um, um, it is a little bit different with uh, Western universities. So as I know how the PhD in US works, that um, it's very complicated to get there and especially with financial aid, but usually you get financial aid for doing something, maybe uh, one year without doing, like you don't have any responsibilities, but then you have to work as research assistant or teaching assistant. Uh, yes, for some particular professor, uh, it can be from one year uh, for one year. It can be uh, for um, um, some years. Uh, but in Russia, it's like this: that um, great um, opportunity of PhD in Russia is that it's not full time usually. So you, for example, can go to um, evening classes. It depends on the program whether it's uh, evening or maybe during the daytime. Uh, the um, the course I held. Um, and what else? Yes, and um, you can, for example, combine it with your job. For example, I knew cases when people were working in central bank and they were doing at the same time some research paper in um, for PhD program. So it's not very big um, scholarship. It's um, like quite low, but it gives you opportunity to work for other company and maybe during weekends you can write your paper. So it will be uh, completely okay. But there is also academic a PhD program. Uh, as I remember, mm, the scholarship is roughly 30,000 um, rubles. Um, I will just calculate what is, how much is it in terms of euros now. Um, something like 400, um, 300 something, um, but um, it's like only because you're studying, but it's full-time. You cannot work uh, too much at some other places, but you can work as a teaching assistant. So you get um, the co more courses you teach, uh, the better is uh, your reach, of course, uh, but you can uh, teach, for example, um, two courses, um, it's possible. But usually uh, you shouldn't take uh, more than five groups uh, for uh, five subjects in this, uh, I mean, five classes at the same time. Uh, so maybe uh, in one class um, you will have uh, three groups, in other you have two groups at the same time, I'd say like this. And also you can work at the lab, so you will, uh, they will pay you as the research assistant. So uh, I think it's possible to afford yourself normally, yes. Um, yes, and um, yes, about tuition fees, I'm not sure, uh, but I think that um, maybe it's possible to pay when you come to HEC, but I'm not sure because of this visa concerns, um, it's maybe more complicated. I just didn't have uh, this situation to help you, but maybe I can ask my friends um, who, was paying, uh, who were paying for uh, the degree, I mean for uh, courses, and um, I think it's possible. So is it possible to study at the master's level and to teach for extracurricular uh, curricular activities? Um, I would say that it's possible to work from your second year uh, as a teacher. I'm not sure how it is devoted, uh, but uh, the structure is like this usually, uh, that professors are only with a master's degree and uh, uh, if they are more like industry professionals uh, or 
with PhD degree or from Russia or from abroad, uh, but um, like assistants who are do, uh, doing tutorials, they can be both uh, professors and maybe uh, students of, P usually it's PhD program, um, and um, some of them can teach from the master program, just the professor should see that you are able to cover all the questions and uh, so you will provide the high quality of education for the students because everything is um, not strict i would say that uh, you will have the student evaluation you will have uh, the points from maybe one to five from the student and comments and i'm sure that um, like people um, people are watching how much um, how to say uh, sorry um, how good grades are you because if you have a grade below three i think you will be fired uh, so it's important to provide a good quality of indication but yes if you um, uh, you have good grades and you will show yourself as a good student motivated of course you can teach uh, from the second year but you should ask maybe in advance because one my mistake was because um after I came um, from the University of Cologne in 2017, it was end of the summer, and uh, I had many concerns about exams, about coursework, and I really wanted to uh, work in the lab for macroeconomic analysis from the September. So I asked my scientific advisor, and he said, "Okay, no problem." But the problem, but uh, and I asked him in September, and he said that it's problematic because they're starting usually from uh, January or um, from the September, so you have to apply in advance. So um, it was uh, quite um, a small mistake. It's no problem because I'm still working there. Um, it's 2020 now, so uh, it was not uh, a too big mistake, but I just asked in advance. And in January, um, um, the head of uh, the laboratory just contacted me. Uh, had uh, We had an interview and he, uh, he said that uh, I will be able to start working from February. So it's better to do everything in advance and start uh, asking good questions, <laughs> I would say. Uh, about thesis, do professors allocate the topic to students or the students choose their own topics? Uh, it's a good question because um, it depends on you. Uh, for example, I was, um, uh, I had <laughs> interesting research experience, I mean, uh, that I was looking at professors first, I would say that whether they have a good uh, research experience, whether they are interested in maybe personalities that they uh, and I can learn from them. Uh, and all my scientific advisors were amazing and I really appreciate everyone because um, with some of them we're still uh, communicated and we're colleagues so uh, it's super uh, great um, but I was um, thinking about the topics like in a broad topic macroeconomics I was always interesting uh, interested in macroeconomics from the second year at the university I think it's uh, thanks to amazing teachers who were, and lecturers and uh, teachers who were doing tutorials um, yes and um, what else? Um, and I just didn't know what exact subjects I um, choose. Uh, I chose then uh, two people and contacted them. And one of them uh, agreed to uh, be my uh, scientific advisor. So, I mean, I'm more for broad topics. And I see um, it's not like um, I'm going not from my topic to the professor, but from professor to topic, if I could explain it well. Um, so I just usually take the broad topic and understand what prof uh, this professor are doing and ask them which topics are interesting for them. And it's like this, but of course, uh, I will never choose the professor who will do uh, things that are not interesting to me at all, uh, just because they are, um, they're great, because um, I think it's important to have the topic you will like. And uh, I was doing the topic uh, on financial repression um so it's uh, government debt regulation i would say and now i'm concerned about uh, also government debt problem uh, but in terms of um like optimal quantity of debt so i had uh, empirical work uh, during my uh, bachelor studies and now uh, and one um, i was also doing coursework on um uh, central bank policy i would say 
um, about um, uh, monetary policy rigidity. Now I'm doing the topic more theoretical one with model calibration uh, about current debt and uh, inequality. So it's uh, I'm very curious about it. So um, and of course I cannot say that I'm the person who perfectly know the topic. No, of course not because. I still have some concerns and pe many people change their topics during their um, studies. I just uh, know that I like mic microeconomics, more like microfinance, government debt problems, but I cannot say that I'm absolutely sure about um, uh, exact topic. I'd like um, doing what I do now, but we will see uh, what else um, is waiting for me. Yes, yeah, so um, more questions do you have? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, the teachers are sure very friendly and student concerned. Of course, um, every, like every person is different. And um, of course, there are more, more strict um, teachers. Uh, some of them are um, not more white. Uh, uh, I cannot say like um, they can be be maybe more friendly and close to you. Of course, it depends on the age because it's uh, quite complicated sometimes to communicate with people who did uh, the academic career for 20 for 30 years and you feel so stupid that you're not uh, you cannot um, talk with them about interesting things. But um, it will come. It's okay. But usually, uh, of course. Um, I cannot say that 100% of teachers are amazing, but most of them are amazing. I would say like this. Question about EVUs. Um, I'm trying to correct the trend. It isn't fixing. Um, I didn't work uh, in EVUs, actually. I know that this program exists for econometrics, but I didn't um, work on this. So the programming languages um, I know and study is uh, Stata, R, MATLAB and Python because I was doing uh, this minor in debt analysis in Python, but I didn't um, use EVUs and uh, I have different little bit operation system. I don't have Windows, so um, I'm not sure that I can help. But uh, maybe in terms of some theoretical part, if you correct a trend, if it's a potential output, I can help you with, um, for example, some filter um, with. Um, uh, Hodrick Prescott filter, but it was uh, or Kalman filter, but it was what I know with trend. Um, yes, but uh, I will be very happy to help if I'm, I'm I will be able to. Yes. Yeah, because um, some teachers actually make made a big like a footprint on my soul. And I still communicate with them. And when I see them, for example, at the university, we're talking. We're um, uh, like even even the, even though they can be um, much older than me. I mean that. Um, uh, but it, it makes no difference in, in the personality. But uh, I say that uh, I can say that like very big, 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 big part of people are super professional in their field. And because if you're not um, professional and you cannot um, explain well, uh, then you can be fired. So um, it will be no excuse. So, and uh, what is important is that um, you don't have problems that, for example, there is cool professors, a uh, professor who is um, already ordinary, uh, ordinary professor, so full professor, and he's teaching very bad. And for example, he don't care of students at all. Um, you will not be afraid to uh, tell something to the dean and um, everything will be fixed. Uh, it's a really true situations and everything is very transparent. It's important because in Russia, in some, okay, in Russia, in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, there is um, sometimes, sometimes corruption at the university. And I can say like 100%, there is no corruption at HEC. At least I've never heard about it uh, uh, from any student because I was communicating not only with my course and it's impossible to just pay money or uh, of course for Western universities uh, it's nothing like this but in UGC it's very uh, true so if you don't pass you will pass uh, you will try till you pass and or you will leave the program so um, you will not be able to do something with it. 
So all during your stay in Russia, what was your impression of how foreign nationals were and uh, are tra uh, treated by nationals, either discrimination or uh, also either security adequate? Uh, yes, it's an important question. Mm, I would say that I've never treated some discrimination um, in terms of uh, that I'm female. Um, I didn't have uh, anything like this. Um, once, once I had some talk about the relationship between uh, Ukraine and Russia, but I don't like um, talking about politics, so this uh, it was okay. But usually, uh, I was so amazed how people can be, I don't know, helpful. And when I came from um, in 2014, um, so from the Donetsk region, from the war, I was actually thinking that. Some people will see, uh, say that, okay, you came from this region and uh, it's not um, the place for you to be here. It was completely not like this. Everyone was asking whether uh, your family is okay, whether you are okay, and whether you have home left. So it's great, it's great. And um, I'm not sure, it depends on the person because um, of course, there, uh, there can be maybe discrimination, but it's not because of um, like no university or uh, country. It's just because of some people are not very good. Um, so it's like this. Um, but if you will face any discrimination, please don't take it at all uh, to your heart, uh, because there are many bad people who don't understand what they are talking about. So. Please don't uh, care. But uh, maybe if it could be twenty years ago, uh, there will be no not uh, there were not so many foreign citizens. But now in Russia, there are it's Moscow is actually very multicultural uh, cultural from because Russia is also multicultural, you know. And um, in terms of uh, like cultural experience and appearance, but it doesn't matter. It uh, on what is what only matters is what the person you are, how you can communicate, how helpful you can be, how smart, how you uh, can use all the resources you ha uh, have in your life. So don't uh, don't care. And especially there are so many international students at the HSC. You can have some really psychological consultation if you have any concerns. And there is a community which will support you at any time. You just uh, should not hesitate to ask. Yes. and. Um, it's like this. Um, yes, it's all questions for now. So are there any more questions? And I'm trying to understand. Ah, okay, uh, I had one more question about the admissions uh, from the, uh, because of this pandemic. And um, I'm not sure because uh, I don't know when I will be able to return to Russia because I'm not sure when the borders are will be open because I'm, in Luxembourg now, um, and I really want to return maybe till September, but we'll see. And uh, but I, what I'm sure about is that HSC will definitely provide some opportunity for you, uh, some online courses um, because I'm doing uh, like online courses, um, like studying online now. So it's of course not uh, this experience with this community, with people who surround you, motivation, campus atmosphere, but it will uh, it will pass and uh, you'll definitely be able to go to Russia. Yes. So don't worry too much. And admissions of, uh, office will do um, everything po uh, possible for you. Yes, but I'm not sure, of course. And I'm not sure that uh, everyone in the, uh, at the university can be 100% sure about the situation because um, not everything depends on us. You're welcome. I'm very happy if it was um, useful for you. I'm sorry, maybe I did too much introduction, but uh, I just wanted to make some motivation for you and to share all experience I have so that um, there will be no hidden moments or something like this. And um, please, um, I understand that you can do everything you can, just um, motivation and uh, find your eyes. And please don't uh, hesitate to ask uh, help. It's uh, very important. And to ask professors, if you don't uh, understand something, they will definitely help. They will provide some resources and um, yes. 
So I'm very thankful for all of you that you came to this webinar. So all of you keep safe. I wish uh, the, the most important thing could happen, uh, health for your family and for you. Uh, so don't be afraid, everything will be okay. And uh, understand that it's uh, not very easy to do, as to say, but uh, we will keep safe, yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, bye. And um, don't hesitate to ask any questions.